saw the movie called The Forgiven. This is based on a true story about Desmond Tutu after the end of apartheid. Um, and his and the the years, or I'm not sure how long it lasted, but the time when he was instituting the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, TRC, and trying to find out who committed what crimes and trying to, you know, establish some sort of justice for it. And, of course, the crimes, the criminals they're going after are the, the white Afrikaners who participated in some, not just, not just uh, apartheid, not just, I mean, almost all the whites, I think, were part of that, but who committed some really serious, heinous crimes, like killing blacks, uh, that was what they were at looking for, and there's a guy in prison, the name of Pete Blomfield, Blomfeld, I don't know if that's the real name of a person of that area, I couldn't find anything at first glance on Google, but... He's in prison, and he's he's a hard, you know, he's a real hardened type of guy. Not sorry for any of his crimes. He talks openly, brags about killing blacks in the beginning. And, but the beginning also starts out with a, a flashback to a little white boy. And he's with a group of black kids. He's holding the hands of a black girl playing with them, and then somebody comes up and starts shooting at one of the black men, and it's the little white boy, I think as best I could tell, that that's Peter Blumfeld when he was a kid, so he was scarred by something at a young age, and somehow he got pulled into the, into the fight against blacks for some reason even though he was friendly with blacks as a kid. So anyways, Desmond Tutu, played by Forrest Whitaker, he does a good job, by the way, Desmond Forrest. Uh, he uh, starts coming to the prison to visit this Peter Blumfeld because he got a letter from him. And for some reason decides to visit him. Even though the first visit, Blumfeld is really rude and swearing and bragging about his crimes and not sorry for anything he's done. And yet Desmond just kind of shrugs it all off. He doesn't. He doesn't get angry or start to hate Peter Blumfeld. He, He's a he's the archbishop, but you know he was the uh, right. I think it was archbishop. Uh, so that's he's practicing his Catholic Christian faith and not you know striking back, turning the other cheek. So the story progresses, and there's also a, um, a flashback to a scene where a woman loses her daughter, I think it was a daughter, a child, and they don't know what happened, and, and has, there's something that happened during that time, it was kind of secret among some of these white guys like Peter Blumfeld, where some really serious, heinous crimes were committed, something called Operation, an operation, I forget what the name of it now, Hacksaw, maybe? I don't know. But anyways, Desmond hears about that, and he's trying to... He goes back to Blumfeld to try to get more information about that. Blumfeld won't tell him anything right away. There's a guard in the prison who apparently participated 
with blown cells in some of these terrible things. And, and the guard knows that Blomfeld is talking to the Archbishop and he's afraid that Blomfeld's going to confess or narc on him, the prison guard or any of the others. And so they they plan a motive, they plan a, uh, they have a plan to to kill Blomfeld. The guard himself wants to kill Blomfeld. He first tries to hire some of the black prisoners to do it, and they won't do it. So he finds he he hatches another plan. And then one day before they before they could kill Blomfeld, Desmond shows up with a tape recorder and gives it to Blomfeld. Blomfeld, I don't know. I thought I thought that he gave it to. Uh, Blomfeld to listen to something, but apparently it's also it was either that or to record his own story on it. And that turned out to be a crucial piece of the movie that seemed to not make sense when it happened at the time, but Jasmine Tutu was contacted by Blomfeld for a final time he, he said he Blomfeld promised he would tell tell him everything but he knows that he's being hunted he's, they're going to try to kill him and so he he, he uh, makes a final will and testimony testament and apparently recorded his story on the tape recorder just in case he couldn't see Desmond Tutu for a final time. And in fact, that night before the Archbishop arrived, uh, the guard in the prison and another, you know, a whole bunch of guards came and just killed Blomfeld uh, under the guise that he was revolting when he wasn't doing anything like that. And, uh, and yet, the tape recorder remained, and he tells the whole story, and people who are culpable are brought to justice. But not the typical kind of justice you would think that they're going to be like we have in America. They're just brought before the Archbishop in a in a group of people, I guess. Uh, and in particular, one of the white men who was guilty of one of the crimes of murder sits before this commission and he starts crying and he's sorry and the, the black lady was the mother of the child who was killed she expresses her anger and her feelings and her, her grief and the guard says not the guard or whatever he was he's not the same as the guard in the prison I don't know what happened to him that was one thing they left unresolved the guard in the prison this other guy says I can't ask you to forgive me and uh, but then there's a moment of silence where this white guy is crying everybody's looking waiting for the black lady to respond and she says and she walks over to him and takes his hand and says, I forgive you. Something like that. It was a touching moment. They 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 did it right to make the to make the effect right. Not like a Chief Grace moment, but some, it was a, something something more deep than that, you know. Uh, so there was some something good that came out of it in that regard, you know. The power of forgiveness. When 
seems impossible to forgive. But to not forgive, as they say, is to take some poison and think that it's going to hurt somebody else. So, for Christians, the takeaway is to forgive. To give grace, not cheap grace, but real grace. Real forgiveness. As best as you can. It's easy to say. But not so easy all the time to do. But the inspiration is if this woman could forgive that man, shouldn't we be able to forgive even greater sins against us? Or even lesser sins against us, I should say. Just pray for the Holy We need the Holy Spirit power to do that. We have to be empowered to forgive. <laughs> what are you doing, lady? So, I forgive you, lady, for texting while you're waiting at the light and making me stop. That's two lights in a row now. I forgive that. If I... If, <laughs> If, if I can, if that lady in the movie can forgive the man for killing your child, I can forgive this lady. But please don't keep doing it. Not as a third light. See, that's, that was a perfect, perfect example right there. Most of the sins we, we have grudges about are small things that shouldn't ruin our whole day or week or month or year losing a child is a whole different story but let us do our best with the power of the Holy Spirit to forgive